Hello, let's do the New York Times Medium Sudoku for May 20th, 2024. There's a link in the description if you'd like to try the puzzle yourself, and I'm going to get started right now. I make very few assumptions about your level of Sudoku solving experience uh, when I do the mediums. So as a result, these do take longer than the hards, but it is simply because I take more time explaining each step as I go with very little assumption that you have already encountered the terminology I'm using. So uh, because of that, I'm going to go over some really basic terminology to start out with. And then as we go, as I use certain logic, I will explain how they work, at least the first time we encounter it. OK, so first of all, we call these cells. There are 81 in the grid. It's a 9 by 9 grid of cells. And uh, our goal is to fill every cell with a digit from 1 to 9. So by the end, in order to solve the puzzle, every cell needs a digit, 1 to 9 only. All right. In addition to that, we do have rows and columns. A row is a horizontal line of cells, and a column is a vertical line of cells. Each row and column have nine cells in them, and we are going to be placing the digits one to nine exactly once each in every row column or box. So for example, this row has a six in it already, which means we don't need any more sixes. The rest of the eight digits should be the digits other than six. They should be one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. In addition to that, this column, this 6 is also a 6 in this column, so the rest of the column shouldn't have a 6 in it, right? It sh they should be the same, uh, 1 through 9 without the 6. So basically we can say that there's no repeated digits in a row or a column. Uh, similarly, you notice that some of these 3 by 3 areas of cells have a bold outline. There's going to be 9 of those as well, and each of those will also have nine cells, and we will end up with one to nine exactly once each in every box, just like a row or a column. So this six is in this box. It's not going to repeat in, this, in the rest of the box. These will be digits other than six. And that's true of every digit. So ultimately, we're going to be placing nine ones, nine twos, nine threes, et cetera, all the way up to nine nines. Um, that'll be our 81 digits. And so that is the puzzle aspect. Now, additionally, when you're presented with a puzzle like this, it doesn't have to be true, but it always is true for published Sudokus. There is only one solution. So we can't go around guessing. What we need to do is use logic to derive what every digit will be. And the reason we're able to use logic to derive that is because there is only one way to do it. And since there's only one way to do it, it is possible to prove that way. It's possible to prove that it is the only way to do it as well. And we will be doing so in every solve that we do of Sudoku by not guessing. OK, so with all that said, um, I'm also going to talk about bands and stacks. And that's just a convenient way to talk about a row of three boxes. That's a band. And a column of three boxes. That's a stack. Hopefully you can kind of envision why those words are used. A band is like a, like a band around something. And a stack is like a stack of boxes, right? OK, so what we're going to do is we're, we're going to start. Um, I, I have a very systematic method that I teach, especially in the mediums, uh, in terms of how to go about getting the easiest stuff out of the puzzle first, extracting information from the puzzle from easy from, from basically what I call the low hanging fruit up to the more advanced stuff when you need to do the more advanced stuff. And my systematic method is a great way to learn how to find those things, how to get an instinct for when those things happen and what those things do and don't do. Uh, and so we're going to start by focusing just on bands. We're going to look at every band. There's three of them. Um, and we're going to look for very specific things in each band. We're just going to go top down so we don't miss anything. And we're going to go in order for the things we look for within each band. So the first thing we're going to look for is when we have a repeated digit in the band. Specifically, every band will have three of each digit, one per row, one per box. That's not six. That's three because they overlap. Remember this six here? It's in this row and in this box, right? So it counts for both. So every row and every box will have a single six in it. That means there's three sixes total. Well, we know where two of them are in this band, but we're missing the third one. Can you spot where the third one needs to go, um, or at least whereabouts the third one needs to go? We don't know exactly what cell, but we do know about where it's going to end up. And just to help out, the answer is going to be in one of these three cells. And we're ignoring the rest of the puzzle. We're focused solely on this band right now. And according to this band, the six needs to go here somewhere. Now, there's a couple ways to prove it. One is we need a six in every row. Well, this row has a 6, and this row has a 6, so this row ends up with a 6. We also need a 6 in every box. This box has a 6, and this box has a 6, uh, which means we need a 6 in this box. Well, we need to place a 6 such that it is the 6 for this box and the 6 for this row, and these are the only three cells that can do that. Another kind of more convenient way to prove that is that this box needs a 6, and this 6 says don't repeat in this row, and this 6 says don't repeat in this row. 
we end up with in one of these three. Another way you could prove it is this row needs a six, and this six says not in these three cells, and this six says not in these three cells, because the box. So not in this box, not in this box, so it ends up here. Notice that all three of these proofs are essentially the same. <laughs> but they, they get the same result, which is good, because they are logically... If you do two pieces of logic that are ident that, that sh If you do two solid points of logic and they reach the same conclusion, that's a good sign. If they reach different conclusions, then you have a broken puzzle in your hands. It means you might have made a mistake. All right, so in addition to that, before we, we think about how six is in these three, we do want to peek down into the other bands and just look for sixes in this area. And we do see a six here, and that does mean that this can't be a six. So actually, six is reduced to two places in this band only, specifically two places in this box. And we want a way to remember that. And what we're not going to do is guess. Remember I said no guessing? We're not going to just put a six in one of them and hope for the best. That's not how we play Sudoku. Uh, it's, not, it's no fun to be guessing, and you're likely to be wrong, and then you've broken the puzzle and you're not going to solve it without backtracking all the way back to the very first thing you did. <laughs> so, Because um, you can't trust anything you did once you make a mistake. Once you place a digit wrong, you have to backtrack all the way to there. So um, what we're going to do instead is we're going to use notation to re help us remember this information we found. And that's the really, really important thing about notation that I want to drill in, is we only notate things that we've discovered that we want to remember. We're not just randomly notating for no reason. And this SudokuPad software, which the link in the description is the SudokuPad uh, web app, um, it supports two kinds of notation, which is really helpful. You've got corner marks and center marks. You can see, you can probably guess which is which. <laughs> the center marks go in the center, corner marks go in the corner. We're going to use corner marks, these ones, to represent that within a box, this is the list of cells that can be that digit. So within this box, the six can be in one of these two cells. And those corner marks are going to remind us of that. And then we just move on. That, that's what we discovered about the sixes. Um, we want to find all of the duplicate digits in the band. And the way I recommend doing that is to be looking, uh, we're going to compare each box against each other. Box one against box two, box one against box three, and box two against box three. So that's three comparisons. I recommend starting with the box with the fewest givens, which in this case happens to be the first box, box one. And just think about the three and the six. We already found the six, but think about the three and the six, and then just look for three six in the other two boxes. If you find that it's in one but not the other, then you've now found a duplicate. So we found a duplicate three here. We also take note that there's a duplicate six, which we would get back to if we hadn't already done it. And then just look at how those affect the box that they aren't. So this middle box, these can't be three. And so the three ends up in one of these two, and we can quarter mark that. And then if we hadn't already, this is where we would have found the six as well. Place the six is there, the corner mark six is there. And then now that we've done that, we've actually compared two, we've done two out of the three comparisons. The two that involve this box. So then we just have to do the compare these two boxes. So I just look at 189 here. There is no 189 over here. So no more duplicate digits. Before we move on, I want you to look for filled box row. A box row is just the set of three cells that are this in the same row within a box. So there's three box rows in every box. Look for filled ones. So like this is almost filled. We know the five and six, but we don't know what this cell is, so it's not filled. Um, we don't have any filled box rows, so nothing to do with that. I'll explain what to do with it when we get there. Uh, and then finally, I want you to look for a row or a box that has been reduced to four or fewer digits. Or sorry, four or fewer open cells is a better way to put that. Um, so for example, this row is reduced to five open cells. So is this box. This box is reduced to five open cells. That's not four or fewer, so we don't do anything with it. We don't have any in this band. And that's it. Just look for those three things in that order, and then we move on uh, to the next band. So I'm going to start with this two and nine. Look for two, nine. There's no twos, but there is a nine. Those nines look in like this. And now notice that there's only one place in this box that can be nine. That's called a hidden single. So we can place the nine. Now the word hidden is going to be used in techniques that involve a row calmer box. So in this case, a single row calmer box. That's, that's a hidden technique. The nine was hidden in the box. A hidden single, meaning there was only one cell the nine could be in. So this box, which we call box five, this is one, two, three, four, five. That's box five. We read left to right, top to bottom. So it is a hidden single nine in box five, meaning that we found that there was a single cell that could be nine in box five, so we placed it. Um, so we just remember hidden means that we're looking at a row calmer box as a whole and looking at how many cells are involved in some technique. All right, um, so we got the nine. So that was the two and the nine taken care of. Now we compare three and four against this box. We already did the nine, right? But there's nothing to do with three or four. So actually, we've found all of our duplicates. It was just the nine. 
Um, but now we look for filled box rows and we have filled this box row. Just because we filled it ourselves doesn't make a difference. This is filled, we wanna look at it. What are we gonna look at? We're gonna look at the two rows in the two boxes that it isn't. So the two rows it isn't and the two boxes it isn't. It'll always be these 12 cells. Well, it'll be 12 cells that are involved. Ignore anything that is empty and ignore anything that's already placed in the box, the nines. But so we're left with the two and the four. Let's take them one at a time. Let's start with the two because it's the lower digit. How does this two affect this box that we found that we had a filled box row? Well, this two removes two from these three cells. These also can't be three just because it's filled with non twos. And that's always going to happen. If, if you search for it the way I told you, that'll always happen. And that means two is restricted to these three cells up here. Well, this is going to do something called pointing. This is the next technique. It's a very important technique to understand. Uh, and it's, it's, it's the first one that would be considered even slightly more advanced than something like a single. Um, but it's, it's, really, it's really pretty straightforward to understand. Um, and the way I like to explain it, there's a lot of ways to think about it. But the way I like to explain it is that within this box, these corner marks mean that we have restricted two to these three cells. Now, what do these three cells have in common with each other? Well, they are all in row four. This row here, they're all in row four. So we know there's going to be a two in this box, and we know the two in this box will be in row four. Well, if the two is going to be here, then it can't repeat in the rest of the row. It's not going to be a here. And that's what pointing does. It eliminated two from these cells. Now, these cells already couldn't be two, right? But and this cell already couldn't be two, and this cell already couldn't be two. But now we know this cell is not two, and that's new information. And so we really only call it pointing if it actually performs an elimination at the time. Like these sixes and threes technically point, but they didn't perform any eliminations. These twos do, and that's when pointing is very powerful. Because we now know this isn't a two. Because the two is over here in the row, so it can't also be here. Another way, if you, if you prefer to think about it this way, I think this is kind of a backwards way to think about it. But if I were to try to place a two here, then now I have nowhere to put two in this box. Notice how we cannot put a two in any of the places we said could be two in the box. And if any time you cannot place a digit at all in a box, you have broken the puzzle. There's no way to solve it because we need to place every digit in every box, including the two. So this cell cannot be two, and that's what pointing does. And you can kind of imagine drawing a line between these three cells. And then if you put arrowheads on both sides, it's pointing at the rest of the row saying you can't be two. That's why it's called pointing. So if these aren't two and this two looks in here, these aren't two and this two looks up, guess what? We can now place the two in this box. Exactly here, another hidden single two. And that was caused by finding these pointing twos, which was caused by inspecting the fact that this was a filled box row. We're going to do the same thing with the fours. This four looks in. Conveniently, this four also looks up, and none of these are fours. So we have a hidden single four in this box. And then those fours are going to look in. And notice the result is the same to this box. This box doesn't actually care that the four got placed versus it being corner marked somewhere down here. This result is the same that these can't be four. And this four looks in, and the four ends up in one of these three. Now with corner marks, something I didn't mention, we're only ever going to corner mark when there are three or fewer places in a box. And even so, if there's two places, put it anywhere. It doesn't matter. Put it in the two places. If it's three places, only if they're all in the same row or column is my recommendation. If you start going around corners, you're going to start thinking you have pointing when you don't, right? Ignoring red marks. Ignore my red marks. If I had this corner marked, I might come back here and I might think, oh, these point. But they don't, right? Um, so anyway. It's just, it's to assist you with scanning, right? You don't want to mark something that's just going to confuse you and cause you to make errors. Okay, so that was that filled box row. Uh, it was quite nice. We got the four out of it. We got the two out of it. Very, very nice. Um, so now what we're going to look for is we're going to look for uh, rows or boxes down to four or fewer digits. I'm going to start with this box, which is down to four. First thing to do, think about what the four digits are. They're the four digits that are missing from being placed. The two, three, six, and seven. And now what I'm doing is I'm looking around for twos, threes, sixes, and sevens. And the first thing that I noticed um, is that this six is looking up, taking six out of these two cells. That's the first thing I noticed. Um, and it's the kind of thing I'm always on the lookout for. Um, and so that means we can actually corner mark sixes here in this box. It's down to these two cells out of these four. Out of these four, it can only be in these two because this six takes out of these two. And that actually points, right? That's going to point in saying, hey, we can't do sixes here. Now, um, I do, I'm just scanning at sixes. I do see that there's quite a bit we can get out of that. So let's just do that now. Because we're focused on sixes and we just discovered something interesting, I kind of want to bake that in as much as I can so I don't forget about these pointing sixes. So importantly, I noticed this six looking down and these sixes pointing in, putting a six in one of these two cells. 
which also points into this box. So we have two, two pointing sixes pointing into this box, and then these two sixes looking in. And that means there's only one place for six in this whole box, and so we can place it here. Um, that's actually just an alternative way that we could have, when we looked at this row, we would have seen that six couldn't be in these three cells because of these three sixes, and we would have placed the hidden six in the row. So there's always there's almost always more than one way to see the same thing, which is great. If you have two pieces of logic that are independent and they have the same conclusion, that's actually a very good sign. That means we haven't broken the puzzle in that way. Um, and you can use whichever way you find first to place it. And if you like, if you see that other ways also do the same thing, that's just increasing your confidence. Okay, so what were what were all the digits this this box needed? We needed two, three, six, seven. Um, and so I'm gonna send I'm gonna center mark. I'm gonna use center marks here. Um, so we needed two, three, six, seven. This cell can't be two or six. So this is only three, seven. And I'm gonna use the center mark mode to remember that. And what center marks will always mean is that that cell that is center marked. So it's a cell centric thing. We're not worried about the box or the row or the column. We're just worried about the cell itself. This cell has been reduced to only three or seven. We call those the candidates. In the, in the solution to this puzzle, this cell will have a three or a seven in it, guaranteed. We don't know which yet. I don't know if it's a three or a seven. I, honestly, I don't know. But I do know it's only going to be one of those two. And so I've center marked that. And just like quarter marks, I recommend only center marking if we're down to three or fewer candidates. So here we know this one's not the six. So we can we can fill uh, two, three, seven here. We know this one's not three because of the three down here. We can fill two, six, seven. But this can be any of two, three, six, seven. So my recommendation is not to mark it. I mean, you could, but it's just going to add clutter to the grid and it's not going to be helpful. It's just going to get in the way. So my recommendation is to avoid marking that unless you get very desperate. All right, so now this row has actually been reduced to three. And whenever you're reduced to three, it is safe to just center mark right away. But I personally like to think about the digits first so I don't miss anything. I like to be cognizant of what the digits are before I get going. So we need a one, four, and seven. So I'm looking around for ones, fours, and sevens to see what I should expect. The only thing I see is we have this four here. So this is going to be one, seven, and then these are going to be one, four, seven. So it's an unfortunate result, but that is what it is. Okay, um, any other rows or boxes down to four or fewer? Uh, I think the answer is no, so we can move on to the next band. Okay, so I'm going to start with this two eight. There are no other twos over here, but there is an eight. So these eights look in. These two eights, remember this is the time we peek up to see if anything else is going on with eights. These eights look down, that lets us place the eight here. Okay, um, other than that we have this six and nine. The six does have a buddy. These sixes poke into this box here. This six doesn't help, but I did notice it. Um, so six is in one of these two cells. Okay. Um, so that is it for duplicate digits. Do we have any filled box rows? We have a filled box column, but we'll get to that later. Any filled box rows? I don't see any. Any rows or boxes down to four or fewer? Well, I do see this box has four. So we're going to think about first what the digits are. We need the two, five, seven, nine. Two, five, seven, nine. Now I'm noticing we have a five and a nine looking down into this box. That's huge. Um, let's do the corner marks first. Let's say we did them one at a time. Well, this five looking down, we'll put a five in one of these two. And this nine looking down, we'll put a nine in one of these two. And this is a situation you're going to encounter more often than just noticing it right away, which is that we have found what's called a hidden pair. Now remember, hidden was dealing with a row, column, or box. In this case, it's in the box. So hidden is saying, hey, look at the box. And the pair is saying, hey, I have two cells remaining for two digits. So both the five and the nine are forced into only these two cells. That's what our quarter marks are telling us. Well, we need two cells to place a five and a nine. The five and nine are going to occupy two cells in this box. And we have found what those two cells are. It's these two. They can't go anywhere else because of this five, nine. Right? And these are filled, but not five, nine. So if there's only two places left in the box that can be 5, 9, and it's the same two places, then we're, that 5 and 9 will end up there. So we can actually center mark that. And what we've done here is we've eliminated any other digit that might have thought it could go there because they've been crowded out. They've been pushed out of the, the cells by the 5 and 9 being the ones to be there. Because we're either going to end up with a 5, 9 like this or a 9, 5 like this. Those are our only two options. There isn't another option that involves these cells being anything else. For example, a two here would be very bad. A two here would tell us that both five and nine go in this cell, and that just isn't gonna happen. You can only put one digit per cell. So this ends up being five, nine. 
which then the question you want to ask is, okay, well, if the five nine are here, well, that means they aren't here. So what are the two digits that go here? And the answer is it's the other two for the box. It's the two and seven. So we can actually put a two seven pair here. Now this two seven pair is huge. This is called a naked pair. And what this does is we know that one of these will be two and one of these will be seven. How do we know that? Well, they share a column, right? They're both in the same column. They also share a box, but let's look at the column. They share a column. And we cannot repeat digits in a column, so these can't both be 2 and they can't both be 7. But if we look, 2s and 7s are the only digits available at all within any of these two cells. Within either of these two cells, 2 and 7 are the only ones available. Which means if this one, so think about this cell alone. This cell will be a 2 or a 7 in the solution. If it's a 2, it makes this cell a 7. If it's a 7, it makes this cell a 2. So 2 and 7 are down here. And that's going to affect the rest of the column, saying they can't be 2, 7. Because whether two sevens like this, this can't be two seven, or like this, this still can't be two seven. So that means this is not two or seven. That's called a naked pair. Now, naked is a term we use when we're looking at the candidate lists of cells, usually cells that are sharing a row, column, or box, but we're not looking at the whole row, column, or box. We're instead just looking at the individual cells and noticing something about that grouping of cells using the fact that they can't repeat digits usually. So a naked pair is a naked 2-7 pair. A naked single, this is a naked single now. Because this can't be 2 or 7 anymore. And so what are the digits this could be? And the answer is only 6. The comprehensive list of digits this can be is down to just 6. Can't be anything else. And since we need to put a digit in there, it better be the 6 or we're not putting anything in there. So we replace the 6. That removes these 6 corner marks. When we remove this 6 corner mark, we notice that in this box, there's now only one six corner mark left, so that actually ends up being a six. It's the only place in the box that can be six. It's called a hidden single, remember? This column now has only one more digit to place. We, we According to the column, we basically know where the two seven are, and most importantly, they aren't here. So um, the only digit remaining that can be placed here is the four, and so we place the four in there, right? The four needs to go somewhere in the column, and it ends up here. Um, it was also a naked single four. So when, whenever you have eight out of the nine digits known in a row or column or box, we call it a full house usually because you can also call it a naked single or hidden single if you want. It is technically both. All right. Um, now, one thing I've noticed is we, we placed digits around here and we want to redo some of the scanning that we already did. We call that following up. We already scanned this band. We already scanned this band. Um, and we just gained information about them. So let's just start with the top band here. We place this four and six. So the sixes are done, but the four, uh, the four did not gain any buddies. Um, so there's not anything to do with the four, unfortunately. Um, but this box did get reduced to four digits. So we can take a look at that. Um, what do we need? We need the two, three, five, and seven. And I'm looking around for twos, threes, fives, and sevens. I see this cell can't be two or three. So this cell is down to five, seven only. And when I, when I mark that, I was looking at the column. And uh, the first thing I look for is, whenever you mark a digit, you should be looking for this. Look for a naked pair, right? If you, if you marked a 5-7, look for another 5-7, looking in the row, in the column, in the box. But when I looked at the column, something I noticed is that 5 kind of stood out to me, because these weren't 5. So I was like, oh, well, at least 5 is going to be up here. But then I noticed this 5 looking in. I did this very quickly, and this is based on instinct and, and experience with scanning. But I did notice that, that this column has only one place for 5, and so now we can place the 5 in that column. There's other ways you could have seen that. You could have seen the 5, 9 looking up in here, this 5 looking up, this 5 looking in, causing a hidden single in the box as well. But either way, that does make this a 5. And then that tells me that 2, 3, 7 goes here, right? This is 2, 3, 7, so we can mark that. In fact, the whole box is 2, 3, 7, so we can mark that, and this top one's not a 3. We also know this co this column is down to 2, 3, 7, and this box is down to 2, 3, 7, so we can just put that as one in here as well. Because the 5, 9 down here, right? It's not going to be up here. OK, so we accidentally finished this stack early, but that's OK. There's no problem with that. We do want to make sure we follow up with this band as well. Um, so I'm looking at my blue digits here. We, do, we did have the 4 marked already. The 6, we have those marked already. Uh, the 9 is done. The, uh, yeah, and there was nothing else placed. We, did, we do have these pointing 2s, but that's not helpful. So I don't think there's anything else with this band to do. Um, I don't think that there's no other rows or boxes down to 4 or fewer. There's just something to look out for. Oh, but up here there are. This this row is down to four or fewer, so we should look at that. We need the one um, seven eight nine. So I'm seeing this cell sees a nine, <laughs> so it's one seven eight. But honestly, one seven eight nine is very unrestricted here. 
otherwise. So we're not going to mark it up, but it was worth looking. Okay, so now we were we were working on this band, if I recall, and we got a lot out of this. This was down to four, and that's why we looked at it. Um, I don't think there's anything else really to look at for this band. So now we're going to move on, and we're going to do the exact same things, but with stacks. If you kind of imagine if you could rotate the puzzle 90 degrees, then your bands would become stacks. Um, your, or more importantly, your stacks would become bands and your columns would become rows if you rotate 90 degrees. And there's no reason rotating a puzzle 90 degrees should change the puzzle at all. And so we can do the exact same thing with stacks. It just instead of saying uh, row, say column. So um, we start with this three six. We do have two threes in the stack. This three looks in. So there's a three in one of these two. Uh, the six does not have a buddy at all. Um, I do notice we do have them marked already also. Uh, the two and the eight. Against this one, we do have two twos that look in. I'm looking over here for twos. I see this one. So there's a two and one of these two. Um, eights don't seem to do anything. Uh, and so now we look for filled box columns. We don't have any. We look for any columns or boxes down to four or fewer. This column is down to four. So what are the four digits? They are the one, four, five, and seven. One, four, five, seven. So I'm seeing this can't be five. So this is one, four, seven. Um, and when I did that, I was like, well, two out of the three aren't five. Maybe there's one more that's not five, but I don't see it. So we can't place a five in this column. One, four, five, seven. I actually don't see, I okay, this four I see. So this is one, five, seven. But I think this is any of one, four, five, seven, as far as I can tell. So we're not going to mark it up. That's four digits. Um, nothing else really in this stack to look at. So we're going to look at, we already looked at this stack. Um, not, there's nothing else to do in this stack. It's going to have to get help from elsewhere um, to, to finish. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll do that. <laughs> um, so let's move on to this last stack here. We have, let's start with this, uh, six, eight, nine. We have all the sixes, uh, the nines we have two of, and that places the nine here. That's quite nice. So now we're going to follow up on that nine. First of all, with buddies, these nines look in putting a nine up here. And also now this row is down to one, seven, eight. We can just mark that now. And this box is down to one, four, seven, eight. So the one is restricted. The ones in one of these two. Which does mean we can place four, seven, eight up here. Oh, the eight's also restricted. So yes, what we have found here is a hidden. Actually, we found a hidden eight in the box. That's even better because this eight here and this eight here look in. I was going to do a hidden one eight pair here, and if I did, I would have then also discovered that it was just they were placed right. This is the one. This is the eight. Uh, very nice. Now this is a four seven naked pair. So that means the rest of the row can't be four or seven. So this can't be seven. If it's not seven. It is a two. Uh, now this this removes the two corner mark from here, and that places the two here. You'll notice we're in a situation right now where there's a lot to do, but I'm still taking my time, and I'm doing it with purpose, and I'm trying to find the, the most obvious stuff to do first. I'm going to clean up the two from this box. I'm going to basically take care of my locality first before I then look elsewhere. Um, but this two also removed this two corner mark, so we can place the two in this box as well. We can clean up the eights from this row. We can clean up the one on this row. And in fact, this three, seven pair cleans up the seven as well. So that ends up a four. And now this is a full house, right? We know all the other digits. So what's digit is missing. It looks like it's the eight place it. And then up here, we need a pair. It's the same pair for the row in the box. At least we hope it is. Cause if it's not, we've broken the puzzle, right? But it is in this case, it's five, nine. We will not be breaking the puzzle today. <laughs> um, so. And when I say breaking the puzzle, what I mean is we have we have made a mistake such that the puzzle can't be solved anymore because we placed a digit wrong, or we eliminated a, a, a or we eliminated a candidate that we shouldn't have. Um, and when it's broken, you can try to backtrack and find where your mistake was, or you can start over. Those are basically your options. Um, so other things I'm noticing. Um, so we we took care of this band. Um, we got we got quite a th lot of stuff, but the first thing I'm noticing, I noticed that the, we made this four, seven pair in this column, which means that this column is down to two digits down here, uh, which are the three uh, and the five, it looks like. So I'm just going to mark that now while I see it. If you notice something like a pair and it has obvious consequences, I recommend doing that right away. Or you're going to forget, you're going to have to find it again. Remember that it was there. Um, the blue digits will always be there for you to go back and go, okay, I placed some blue digits. What's, what's happening there? Um, this column is down to 157, so I can mark that up. And again, I'm just taking my time on what we actually found. We did get these, this 8 here, which has a buddy, and that places 8 in this box, which then that displaced one of my 6 corner marks, which I was paying attention to. So then I was looking for 6s in the box, now there's only 1. 
That also places the six in this box. I'm going to speed up a little bit from here because I don't think there's anything super magical going on anymore. This is down to one, five, seven. We know the five is one of these two. Um, okay, so this is down to three, five, seven, but it can't be three or five. So it's the seven, which resolves the whole row. And uh, sorry, I meant to place a four there. That's one. We get the three. We get the seven, three, seven. We get the seven and four. This whole box. Oh, no, sorry. This is the seven resolves. I thought the whole box would. This three that we placed removes that three, so that's a three. This is no longer seven. Um, okay. So at this point, I'm looking for the lowest hanging fruit. This box, for example, has a pair remaining. It needs a three. Uh, if Since it needs a three and this three can't be there, it actually is placed, so that's the three. And we're left with an eight. Um, now this column is down to two. If you get down to, uh, you have a, see a full house or it's down to two, just look at it, right? At this point in the puzzle, just look at it. Um, really any point in the puzzle. Five, seven. Five, seven's not resolved. This is down to three, and it also finishes the box, so we want to look at that. We need the one, we need the two, and we need the four. And this cannot be the two or the four. So this is the one. Okay. This is down to five, seven, nine. Surprisingly, it's all of them. Okay. Um, this is one, five, seven, nine for the column. One, five, seven, nine. This can't be one or nine. So this is five seven. Um, I'm seeing for this. Oh, sorry, what one five seven nine is what we were looking at for this column. Uh, one five seven nine. I don't see a restriction on that, so that's not where to look yet. I'm looking to see if any of this stuff actually formed pairs or triples or anything that I haven't noticed yet. But I think just penciling some more stuff will will finish the puzzle anyway. Um, there's probably there's probably other ways to to approach this ending, but this is how I'm going to do it. Uh, we need the two, four, five, seven here. This can't be the two, so it's four, five, seven. And that, that as soon as I place that four, remember the, the things that I'm scanning for, right? One of them involves well, one of these was a four, and it looks like four is pretty rare in this column. In fact, it is. The, this is the only place for four. You can also look at these fours looking down and this four looking in. Either way, this ends up a four. That gives us the two, four here. That gives us the seven, two here. That gives us the five, one. This is down to seven or nine. Oh, this five gives us the nine, which actually will help. This is one and five, seven, one. Yeah, everything's collapsing now. That's the nine, five and nine, seven, five. This is a seven and we're done. All right, so I hope the, this series has been helpful. Um, uh, if, you're, if you're new to Sudoku or just want to brush up on your basics um, in a very systematic way, um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I do this every day. So if you didn't quite understand something today, maybe reinforcement, watching it day by day will help with that. Uh, trying the puzzles yourself and trying to use this methodology will also help quite considerably so you can get hands-on experience with it. So those would be my recommendations. Hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, then why not leave a like, subscribe, and a kind comment below.